everyone. Thank you for having me. My name is Anke Thrin from BioID in Nuremberg. And what you just saw was a weak link between a digital and a physical identity. I would like to talk about strong links that we can generate BioID and keep together for our physical and digital identities. So please follow me. We will start, or I will start, with um, talking about your digital representative, which is your digital identity. I will go on to a biometric identity life cycle, and in the end, I will talk about the vision that Keep and Biology together will um, go for, or are going for right now. So, your digital representative. As you just saw, there is um, a very weak connection between what we call our digital identity, like our accounts, the account information that we have, and the username and password is actually the link that we most of the time use for making sure that, well, we can get access to our accounts and that we can use our digital um, identities. So, a very weak link, if it comes to password, is the password reset part or the account recovery part. If you want to change data, like the lady just did, um, it can be very easy to get into accounts. So you want um, to reset your password, or let's say someone wants to reset your password, they need to get access to your email account because the new password will be sent there, right? And that's how you can get access, and it's so easy. So the problem is, that arises from this, that we have identity theft problems, we have fraud problems, and identity theft, for example, can really change people's lives. So we need to go about this problem and create something that connects us to our, um, to our digital identities. So we want to bind our digital and our physical identities by something that cannot be faked easily. So as I said, while there's a big need for identity theft and fraud prevention from an individual's point of view, I do not want my data compromised, I do not want my accounts to be used by someone else, but, of course, from a company's perspective, KYC and AML compliance is another point. They have regulatories, especially in the financial, financial industry, for example, where you really need to know who you interact with online. That's the KYC part. Know your customer. You have to be sure that there's not someone else using the account of your customer because, in the end, um, there's, as I said, regulatories, laws that will um, make you liable for it. So now we come to the strong link that BioID proposes. The idea is that you use your unique biometrics because only you have them. You can use them for binding your digital and your physical identities. Your, rep your digital representative will only belong to you. No one else can use your accounts if it's secured by your face, for example. So that's why BioID offers explicit biometric authentication. We do face recognition as the main focus, and we make sure that only you can access your digital identities. We do it in a way that is GDPR compliant, as we say we do anonymous biometrics. Well, how does that work? Well, we authenticate you by saying, yes, this is you, but we don't know who you are. We don't have a name of you, we don't have your address or things like that. And that's where the collaboration with Keep gets very interesting because they might know who you are or they have the verified attributes in the wallet. Um, but I will get to this later. One important point I would like to bring up is that we have liveness detection. And in this area, we are the innovation leader. Um, so a small company from Nuremberg is innovation leader in the area of liveness detection, meaning that your biometrics are not only securing that you get into there, but not even a photo or a video from you can get into your accounts. It's only you. You have to be there live. So we guarantee that the person is really sitting in front of the camera. And the nice thing is that we do that without additional sensors like a 3D camera. We do that simply with algorithm, and it's not simple. But we do that with, uh, without um, additional sensors, as I said. So now I'm coming to the biometric identity life cycle. I will go to a special use case, which is the biometric onboarding and the account recovery, which you do with biometrics. And well, if you think about the traditional identity life cycle, 
you always have the onboarding process, you have the usage, you have situations like password reset or account recovery, and sometimes offboarding. What you can do with biometrics is that you do onboarding with a biometric enrollment. So you link your email address, for example, or your account to your face. This means um, that you can later also recover your account with your face, that you can log in with your face and do actions like e-signing, for example, or um, maybe a transaction of money. The nice thing is that we also offer an ID verification with the face enrollment. So that means that you can have a comparison between your ID and the image or the, the live person. So the ID image and the live person are compared and we know that the ID is actually yours that you present because it could be stolen as well. But we know that there's a verified ID um, connected to the face. As I already mentioned, usage can be made with face authentication. So if you want to do a transaction or a qualified signature, for example, you really need to be sure that only you can do it. And the company, for example, has to be sure that only their customer, who is really allowed to do it, can sign um, a document, for example. So we do that with the strong link of face authentication. And then if it comes to our example, if you want to recover an account, then you want to be sure that only you can do it, that not someone else can say, well, I forgot my password, please, uh, could you send me a new one? And then he can access um, the account. So that's where we do biometric account recovery. And again, you can use the ID re-verification, meaning there is already an ID photo stored and you can compare this photo automatically and in real time to the live person in front of the camera. What you can see here are the keyplets that we offer within the Keep Wallet and the, the Keep Marketplace. Um, one of them is the face recognition and it can serve as a password and as means of explicit user consent. I think you all know GDPR and you know that user consent might be one of the biggest problems because, well, someone clicked yes on the computer, but who was it? Um, explicit user consent can be done with face recognition because then you know, well, the one who clicked yes is the one who looked into the camera. The face-to-face -face level of assurance, which is a, something for EIDAS, I think most of you know about this as well, um, can be reached through our liveness detection. If you have liveness detection as sophisticated as BioID, you can really be sure that the person is there, so it's like a face-to-face -face level of assurance. Then quick and easy re-verification of attributes can be done with the ID face um, photo validation, as I said, with photo verify. So if you're interested, have a look at the keyplets and of course you can always ask questions and come to me for more details. Um, we have a, an example of a workflow here. So the idea is that if you onboard someone, let's see if this works. Okay. If you onboard someone, then you're on the right um, flow, part of the flow. You would probably ask him to verify an email address or a phone number. Um, and then you would also want to know who this person is. It's not a simple onboarding, let's say maybe it's for a telco or, um, yeah. And what you could do is the typical video ident process. You can see that one here. So you have to have an appointment, you have to wait, and then someone will um, yeah, verify that you are you. You show the ID card um, into the camera, you show yourself, maybe you have to touch your nose or something so that you're live, so that they know you're alive, and then you will be verified and your identity will be put into the wallet. But you could also do that all in real time and you can do it automatically. For example, if you combine BioIDIS technology with uh, the ID check identity card um, OCR uh, reader, so you would um, scan your ID, the OCR would read the ID, the ID data and would check that this is a proper ID, no one wanted to, no one stole it, for example, or that it's valid. Then you would have to still check that this ID, which is valid, actually belongs to the person that you are interacting with, because it could be a stolen one, especially maybe in the area of rental cars, this is important. Then you would use the photo verify technology from BioID, you would um, use the photo that you have from the ID card, from the scanning, and you would compare it with the face that is live in front of the camera. And voila, you'd have um, 
a verified identity with um, a proper ID laying in the back, and yeah, you know that you're really interacting with the one who is uh, who is saying to you. Um, I talked about the account recovery case as well, and what you can see here is that in the middle we have the face recognition. The idea is, well, if someone is onboarded properly with their email address, with their ID card, with their face, then if you need to have account recovery or you want to maybe sync data between different um, cell phones, for example, then you can use your face to make sure that only you can sync this data, that only you can recover an account. So it would be very easy. You don't have to go through the whole right process again if you, for example, lose your account data or your phone or so on. So it will automate a lot of processes and it will make it easier for the companies and the customers. So what we do is, well, we take a selfie for authentication. This is an example of how it could work. So BioID tries to make it very easy. Um, the first one is we look at the camera, or you will look at the camera, so that our software can recognize your face, and then you move slightly. This moving is the liveness detection, because we want to analyze um, with our algor algorithms that you're a, th a 3D person, that you're not a video or um, a photo of someone. Well, and then the authentication process starts. It's only a few seconds, it's real time, as I said, and you'd have a very secure me method to prevent identity fraud, theft and fraud. So I will come to the vision now that Keep and BioID are working for together. We want frictionless, frictionless on and offline usage. This means that, well, your identity in the offline world can be face-to-face -face secured because you know who you interact with because you see him, for example, or you can check the ID card. But if you are off online, you want to have the same trust levels. And what we want to achieve is that it doesn't matter if you act online or offline, the trust levels are very high and you know whom you interact with. And you know that your accounts are only used by you and not by someone else. So we want seamless online and offline verification. For example, if you think of um, a car rental, you would onboard maybe online, and then you can go to the airport and you want to have the car, but it's nighttime, so no one is there. But it doesn't matter because you already verified online, and then you can maybe verify again with your face on the camera of your cell phone, and then there's a key on your camera and you can open the car, or a key on your cell phone and you can open the car. So that's what we mean between um, that's what we mean with frictionless or movement between on and offline identities. In the, in the end, we want to have a secured omni-channel identity. So what we will get is a very strong connection between digital and physical identities. The connection will be your unique biometrics. You will have reusable biometric attributes and you will have a strong link. This link can be embedded in a multi-factor solution you can use it as step-up authentication, let's say someone compromises your account, then you would use the face, but then you would use the ID and face verification, photo verify. So it depends on the use case, but it's very flexible and always creates a very strong link if you use biometrics. And the result? Secure digital identities and automation efficiency, because you can do processes in real time, you can do them automatically, and as I said, it will save energy for companies and individuals alike. Thank you very much, and if you have questions, please come to me.